No, I'm just joking. <laughs> it wouldn't be the best. Yeah. Marcus? Hey, what's up, man? I figured you'd be the first one to ask me questions. I appreciate it. <laughs> How are you feeling? I feel great, man. You know, blessed as always. Woke up this morning. That was a great start. And uh, getting the finish was a great, was a great midday thing. So... <laughs> Now that you've had uh, it's been a couple, couple minutes from your fight, um, how did you feel about your performance? You know, I felt good. I still feel like I uh, – I mean, I felt good about it. I think I did what I was supposed to do. I wanted to pull the trigger a little sooner, but I also told myself to be free in there, not to chase anything, uh, and not to pick my shots, you know. So part of me was like I wanted to be my normal self and be like, throw 300 things right off the bat, overload this guy, get everybody on and ooing, and the other part of me was like, just be calm, be composed, find a shot. Let's win this fight, you know? What was the game plan coming into the fight? Uh, game plan was just to, again, be me, make sure, you know, I knew his plan was to try to get under me and wrestle me. Obviously, that's his strongest suit, you know? Uh, and again, I, I have a lot of faith in my grappling, but I, why play in somebody else's best ballpark? You know, I, I should wanted to keep it in mind. So keep my feet moving, um, stay away from, evade from the, the shots, the first shots, get them desperate, and then find my shot and put them away. How did it feel not to cut a thousand pounds before a fight and uh, have <laughs> have a nice uh, training camp? No, it was awesome to do it with the training camp. You know, weight cuts are still weight cuts for me, no matter what. You know, but uh, when it's, it's nice to know, like, okay, I'm at week five, I'm at week six. Uh, you know, it's like it's nice to know that I'm doing things adamantly because you know, even at the beginning of the week, where you're water loading, you see that big number, you're like, whoa, 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 wait, I was doing everything right. What happened? And then it's like everything starts to taper off through the week, and you're like, okay. We're good, you know, so it was it was awesome. It was awesome to have this is the longest camp I've had, you know, and camp went great. Um, nothing changed as far as training except for the fact that I got to try to get better. It wasn't like I was, you know, waiting for a fight everywhere. It was like just getting better, getting better, then getting into fight camp and perform. So it was beautiful. When do you when when would you like to return? Uh, you know, as soon as possible. I was talking to my manager. He was saying a quick turnaround. Uh, so that'd be good, too. You know, at least one more this year. That's the plan. Uh, when it happens, who it happens against, we'll figure that all out. But at least one more this year uh, would be great. Uh, I don't really have any injuries. So, you know, if it makes sense and if it makes money and makes, uh, makes dollars make sense, uh, you know, all, all those good things. So I'm, I'm game. <laughs> I'm game to get down. You want a full UFC crowd for your next fight? You know that would be nice too. I, you know, I haven't got to feel that energy, and I've had some pretty on the on the regional circuit. I've had some pretty crazy, uh, pretty crazy crowds. You know, I used to sell a lot of tickets, so it'd be cool to see how everybody goes. Ahs, the oohs, the boos, all of it. So I'll take it all. Um, your uh, food blogs. Uh, how are you liking that? I'm loving it. You know, honestly, it wasn't even my idea at first. My buddies kind of talked me into it, and after I started doing it, I was like, man, you know, this is a lot of fun, you know. Uh, I just get to be me. I get to, to interact with, with, you know, different fans and different, a different platform, too, and just enjoy myself. And I get to eat good food that I like to make anyways because that's the thing. Like, I really do like to cook. Uh, my wife will tell you, like, I have so many different dishes that I like to cook. Most of them are not healthy. <laughs> so, yeah, like, it's not like it's a healthy cookie show. And then I'm just a goofball, you know. I, I don't take myself too serious, you know. So uh, I just like to get on there, have a good time, cook some good food, and get some, uh, get some out there. So it's been good. And then my podcast, too, Punches and Pites. Um, I really just enjoy hearing people's stories, you know, and talking about their, their, their journeys. Because, you know, it's, it's always lost in translation, like, the journey. You know, everyone just sees the tip of the iceberg, and they don't see everything under there. And that goes for each one of us in our lives. Like, man, everything's working out great for that guy. It's like, oh, yeah, but the last 10 years have been kind of crazy. <laughs> What did you do with that 50K bonus last time? Uh, paid back all my debts. I'm broke still, you know. Like, I was, you know, honestly, I went from working and making decent money to making no money and just fighting. So, like, I was going into debt, you know. And, I again, I was blessed to be able to go into debt like that but uh, and, and then pay it back. So, you know, again, I went broke paying my debts back, and that's okay, you know. So, uh, I was, I, honestly, I keep saying it, it was a blessing to be able to pay back the things that I got to, that I loaned. And a lot of people don't get a chance to do that, you know. So, uh, yeah, that's what I did. So I didn't really have any, I didn't, there's nothing special that I did with that money. <laughs> Not one thing. Luckily, my friends did hook me up with a Rolex though. So that was kind of cool. They came, popped up on me with a Rolex. I was like, and a, and a suit. I was going to wear it, but I was like, you know what? Maybe not the first, maybe not my first actual fight week. Maybe I'll wait to wear the suit until 
maybe the second actual fight week. So I I remember when you when you posted that picture of the Rolex and people were really like, oh my god, he spent all his money on a Rolex. Now that's how fighters go broke. <laughs> yeah, no, a hundred percent. My wife was getting all upset about it. You know, I was like, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Everyone thought I bought it. I was like, I would have never bought that. <laughs> you know, I, I would have never. Bought, exactly. If you read the caption, for sure, the caption definitely said thank you to my two friends that. I would have never bought this. I wouldn't, I'd still not have a Rolex to this day, you know? So now I have a Rolex and it's because of them. So it was cool because I didn't have to do it for myself. Last few things, uh, buddy, Sean O'Malley's fighting next week. Uh, how do you see that going? You know, it's a tough fight. It's a tough fight, but I do, I believe in Sean. You know, I do think he has that it factor. And he has a lot of different dangerous tools that he could use against Al Jermaine. We can't discount Al Jermaine, though. Al Jermaine's a champion for a reason, and he's, one of the best in the world, one, one of the goats at this weight class for a reason. Like, he's going to go down in history as close to being one of the goats for a reason. He's very dangerous. Uh, so, you know, obviously, Sean's my, my teammate. I'm definitely going to pick my teammate, you know, and, and root for him. But I'm, I don't doubt uh, Aljamain at all. Aljamain's a very tough task, and Sean's going to have to have his head on uh, com completely straight for this fight, you know. But that being said, don't, don't close your eyes. Don't blink. That one's going to be a banger for sure. And finally... Abdul Kamara, when's he up next? Oh, he coming. He coming. He almost came this week. I was, he was almost doing it this week, he, and he was ready. You know, he was ready. This guy has been ready to make weight this week more than me. It was crazy. I was like, what is going on? How are we doing this? He was like, yeah, he's ready to come too. So, you know, he'll be here. He'll be here, and it's the same thing. We just got to stay diligent, you know. Stay diligent. Not our time. It's God's time, and, you know, and, and he's doing the right thing, staying focused, being a good father, being a good man, and I think those things – they contribute a lot to, in, to, to making it. So I think he's going to be here real soon. Congrats. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Marcus over here. Just a couple of months ago, you weren't even a part of the UFC roster. And then you ultimately got the call, took the short notice fight, got the win. And then you fast forward, you come here, you get another win. What's the message you would tell yourself to the version of yourself from like six months ago? Uh, the same message I was telling myself. I'm not doing this for outcomes, you know? I'm not doing this, like I, want to, I wanted to be here in the UFC, but I wasn't doing it at, like if I didn't get here, it wasn't a waste. I think some of us get so caught up in like, what if I never get there? What if I never make it? Is it even gonna be worth it? It's like, what are you becoming in the process of it? Are you becoming a good man? Are you becoming stronger, more confident? Are you, are you developing better skills? If you're doing all those things, then you're on the right path, you know? And again, not all of us can make it here, but stay diligent, stay diligent to yourself and, you're, and it's worth it, you know? So I would tell myself those things, like it's worth it even if I never made it here, right? I made great relationships with great training partners. I've been a part of their lives. I've been able to help them out. And if that's not a beautiful thing, I don't know what is, you know? Indeed, that is. And uh, when you look at the stack division you're a part of, are there any names that stand out to you? Every or? name. Look at these guys that are on the car this, today, you know? Like, it's crazy. Blackshear. The, all these guys are savages. I don't doubt any of these. I don't take any of these guys for granted. Everybody here is good, you know? Great, I would even say, you know? So the whole, the whole Bantamweight division is nuts. And, you know, again, we're all going to get matched up at some point. It depends on where it is, where, how it all plays out, you know. But, uh, I mean, you look at these guys and you're like, man, different sizes too, heights, sizes, shapes, styles. It's like, man, what is going on? There was a time where it was like everybody was kind of the same. And it's like, no, <laughs> everybody's different and everybody's dangerous. So it's a crazy division to be a part of, and I'm blessed to be here. For sure, it has evolved. But um, is the Bolaños one so, something you'd like? Oh, yeah, that's not uh, yeah, that's not off the table either. You know, again, like I know he got injured, and if they send me that one again, I'm down, you know. So, I, I, yeah, again, I trust I trust myself. I trust my teammates. I trust my management. So, you know, if I think that would have been a banger tonight too. People would have been excited about that. And that one would be crazy in front of a crowd too, you know. I've watched Bolaños for a, lot of time, a long time. He has a lot of different things. We're both knockout artists. We both have a lot of knockouts on our record, you know. Somebody's going to sleep on that one for sure. So, uh, yeah, you know, whatever happens, happens. So we'll, we'll get back to the drawing board, and I'm sure you guys will see something coming up soon. I agree. That would be a fun one. And I saw Alex also mentioned Sugar Sean O'Malley. What's it like training with him? Uh, you know, it's, 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 been, it's been it's normal for me, I guess. You're right. You know, like I've been training with Kyler, Mario, and Suge since – you know, the beginning, you know, like I've been training with them before they were in the UFC. I remember when Shug was 18 years old and came out here from Montana. I was at the UFC gym. I had two kids already working at Circle K across the street. And here this curly hair kid comes in here, you know, like, you know, like a pink shorts on, you know, like, like, so for me, it's, you know, again, it's not anything crazy for me. You know, I've known them 
we, it's been a friendship event. It's, it's been more than just, oh, Suge's this crazy icon, you know? I watched it all happen, so I don't really think too much into it, you know? That's not to say it's not awesome to see him be as big as he is, but for me, he's just Sugar, you know? Suge Sean. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Congratulations. Absolutely. Thank you. Congratulations, Marcus. You've always impressed me. You, you, uh, you don't fail. What I like even more is if you can enlighten me, tell me more about Munchies with Marcus. Oh yeah, Munchies with Marcus. So that's the cooking show. Uh, and you know, it's just been a, been a good time. I like to cook good foods. I got some other episodes coming out, you know, cheesy chicken rice, uh, <laughs> a couple different ones dropping. Uh, and I, honestly, my, again, my, a uh, couple of my buddies kind of was like, Hey man, we need to start doing a couple of different things. You know, you're not really out there. And I was like, you're right. You know, I need to do something that's more authentic to myself. And I'm like, man, I do like to cook. And he's like, cooking show, let's do it. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means, you know? And we kind of just jumped into it, and it's just been fun. It's been a lot of fun. People have been really receptive to it. I feel like it's authentic, and I get to be myself in it too. So it's been it's been really it's been a lot of fun doing it. So I'm gonna keep it going. I got another episode dropping here next Sunday, so uh, look out for that. Um, I think that is the cheesy chicken rice episode coming in. So uh, with, that'd be that'd be a lot a lot of fun. So it's been great. I've been enjoying it a lot. Well, what I like to to do is uh, to offer you. I've been in reality TV for 10 years. What I would like to see you do along with your production company is find an independent streaming service, because I don't know if a major network would pick this up, but if you find an independent streaming service or some sort of platform, you can make a passive income and get sponsors, because this is really, really good. See, that's the type of information I need right there, because you know I'm just kind of just winging it at this point, and it's like I do, I do want to make something of it. That's the plan to make a passive income. So, I like that idea. I definitely need to do that. Uh, I have to pick your, I have to pick your mind about that a little bit more and figure out how to maneuver through those channels. Because, yeah, we kind of just were like, hey, well, let's do it, and it's been happening. And it's like, how do we even monetize this, or what are we? What is monetize? What does that even mean? You know? So it's like just keep putting them out and something will happen but it's probably better to have an avenue to go down so that's a that's good information i appreciate it yeah to close i don't know what's going to happen with your podcast but this is really really good and then just add an about section because i looked in the about there's nothing in there describing you know uh munchies with marcus so you need a description in there okay okay about write that down abdul write that down for me all right I need to I need to talk to my social to my social media people about section get it done and we're gonna need to get that done ASAP today. <laughs> Congratulations! Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you all. I really appreciate you.